Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to cardiology landmark trials i am dr nick nickam a cardiologist from houston texas today we are going to look at uh, one of the important landmark studies uh, that is dapa heart failure trial the dapa heart failure trial stands for dapa glyphosin in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction this was reported by dr john mcmurray the study came from glasgow england it was reported in new england journal and let us look at uh, some of the interesting facts about this particular study before we go any further let us look at some pharmacology about uh, dapagliflozin it is a sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor it's predominantly used in treating patients with uh, diabetes mellitus and it interferes with the glucose absorption in the renal tubules uh, with the increased excretion of glucose in the renal tubules there is an osmotic diuresis which forms the foundation for some of the benefits we have seen in patients with the congestive heart failure interestingly it reduces the hemoglobin a1c by a modest 0.6 points it depletes intravascular volume because of osmotic diuresis however serious volume depletion was uh, seen in about 1.2% in the treated group and 1.7% in the placebo group and because of volume depletion these patients may be prone for hypotension looking at the study there are some speculations the beneficial effects of this uh, dapagliflozin go far beyond just glucose excretion and osmotic diuresis that is something that has to be proven or established this study was a multi center randomized placebo controlled study looking at uh, dapagliflozin versus placebo in patients with the heart failure with a new york heart association class of 2 to 4 there were 4744 patients the duration of the study was 18 months the mean age was 66 24% were female and only 42% of these patients had diabetes so the remaining 58% had no evidence of diabetes and the question of whether they are going to get hypoglycemia was not proved to be true in this study because there was no evidence of hypoglycemia in patients receiving dapagliflozin the average ejection fraction was 30% as we will see in the coming slides one third of these patients had evidence of uh, ejection fractions less than 30% and of course all these patients had elevated pro bnp and there are subgroups of elevated bnp which we will address in a moment some of the features of the population included in this study are age greater than 18 years new york heart association classification 2 3 or 4 ejection fraction 40% and pro bnp of greater than 600 picogram per ml but if these patients were admitted to the hospital if their bnp was greater than 400 they met the criteria and in patients with atrial fibrillation the bnp had to be greater than 900 picograms per ml of course these patients were on maximum standard treatment for congestive heart failure the treatment arm received dapagliflozin 10 mg po daily while uh, while the placebo group of course received the placebo and it was uh, blinded and here is the breakdown about uh, 4744 patients were involved in this trial out of which 2373 patients received dapagliflozin whereas uh, 2371 patients received the placebo here are some of the baseline characteristics as far as the treatment is concerned obviously they were on pretty good medical treatment as you can see 95% of them were on diuretics almost 
plus percent were on A's or A or B's, uh, beta blockers 95 percent uh, and as I said almost uh, 35 percent had ICD or CRT suggesting significantly reduced left ventricular function. Some of the exclusion criteria included a GFR of less than 30 ml per minute per meter for 1.73 meter square, symptomatic hypotension, uh, pardon the typo here, with a blood pressure less than 95 millimeters of mercury and of course type 1 diabetics were excluded from this study. Here is the study protocol as you can see basically they were seen on the, during the first visit and during the second visit they were randomized to either placebo or uh, dapaglifosin. They were followed up uh, a few more times during the course of 18 months. Now let's look at some primary outcomes. Here is the, the DAPA group 2,373 and the placebo group 2,371. Death, myocardial infarction, hospitalization and urgent heart failure visits were seen in 16.3% 16 of the DAPA group whereas uh, the incidence was 21.2% uh, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.74 and a p-value of 0 0.001. We saw similar results in worsening heart failure which was uh, considerably less in the treatment group compared to the placebo group. Cardiovascular deaths were also similarly reduced 9.6% uh, in the treatment group with uh, dapaglifosin whereas it was 11.5% uh, in the placebo group with a hazard ratio of 0.82. All-cause mortality was 11.6 in the treatment group versus 13.9 in the placebo group, which uh, accounts for almost 2.3% uh, absolute reduction in mortality in the treatment group compared to the placebo study. And here are some graphs which kind of highlight what I already talked to you in the previous slide, but just to show you the difference between diabetics and non-diabetics. As far as cardiovascular death, heart failure hospitalizations and urgent heart failure visits, there was a significant benefit in the dapaglifosin group compared to the placebo group in diabetics and in non-diabetics. We see similar improvements in cardiovascular mortality in both the diabetic and the non-diabetic group and worsening of heart failure. We see the same benefit which was already shown in that table a couple of slides ago. And now let's go to cardiovascular death or hospitalization. Again, this was an improvement in the dapaglifosin group compared to the placebo in diabetics and in non-diabetics. All-cause death, which I talked to you about, there was a 2.3% absolute reduction in the overall mortality and slightly better in the diabetic group compared to the non-diabetic group. Now let's look at some of the secondary endpoints uh, in this study, DAPA heart failure trial. And here are some secondary endpoints, total heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death, including first and repeat hospitalizations. Again, there was a significant improvement in the treatment group in diabetics and in non-diabetics. Along with the improvement in the overall morbidity and mortality, reduction in the repeat hospitalizations they also looked at symptom improvement in both groups. For that, they used the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire, which is scored from 0 to 100. Higher score means fever symptoms. The groups which showed improvement, as you can see, had a significantly higher number in diabetics and in non-diabetics compared to the placebo groups. Again, there was a 0.78 hazard ratio in the diabetics and 0.88 in the non-diabetic population.
the worsening of renal function was not a major concern in this particular study as we can see from this table the patients who received dapagliflozin the incidence of worsening renal function was seen only in about 1.7% in the diabetic group and only about 0.8% in the non diabetic group i already talked to you about uh, the effect of uh, hemoglobin a1c and in fact in both diabetics and non diabetics and also at various levels of hemoglobin a1c there was an improvement in the hemoglobin a1c in the treatment group compared to the placebo group side effects and adverse events i don't know it doesn't matter what study you look at you take any randomized studies for that matter and you look at the effect of the drug being tested is going to be very effective in terms of treatment but when it is compared to the placebo somehow the side effects almost match item for item i'm not going to be labor you on this particular issue except to point out volume depletion volume depletion was noted in 7.8% of the people who received dapa which causes glycosuria which causes osmotic diuresis but i have no idea how a placebo group can have a similar incidence of uh, volume depletion in both diabetics and in non diabetics this is beyond my imagination anyway let's move on you can look at the rest of the stuff let's move on to the next important point conclusion from this dapa heart failure trial involving dapa glyphosin it reduces all cause mortality in patients with uh, heart failure with a new york heart association classification ranging from 2 to 4 it reduces cardiovascular mortality it reduces hospitalization for heart failure it improves the kansas city cardiomyopathy score for symptom improvement it worked well in diabetics and in non diabetics it may have a beneficial effect other than glucose which needs to be determined uh, one of the drawbacks of this study was that less than 5% were blacks so we have no idea how the black population would have responded to this particular drug in question i thought maybe i'll just check this this is such a novel drug with a dramatic improvement uh, in heart failure symptoms morbidity mortality i said maybe we should be prescribing this to every patient with a heart failure with uh, new york heart association classification of 2 to 4 then i find out the cost of this pill retail is $602 and even with the best discount it is approximately $500 per month that is $6000 per year almost $10000 per study duration of 18 months then i talked about there was an absolute 2 to 2.3% reduction in the overall death that means you have to treat 50 patients to save one life with this treatment and if you add the cost of treating 50 patients it comes to just half a million dollars if you are the pharmacy director making a decision these are things that you need to take into account the drug seems to be pretty effective in improving overall cardiovascular maze events but at what cost ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this presentation and please please do subscribe to our youtube channel and watch other cardiology landmark studies uh, on our youtube channel thank you so much for your time <laughs>